Yeah, welcome back. The situation around Tipperary hurling continues to rumble on. You might remember, uh, what, 24 hours ago during the course of last night's news round, Liam Cahill was appointed the new Tipperary senior hurling manager, replacing, of course, Colin Bonner, who was relieved of his duties as that now infamous statement has gone uh, just under a week ago. That followed, obviously, the departures from his backroom team of Paul Curran and Tommy Dunn, two previous All-Ireland winners. Uh, There was a management committee meeting after the departures of Dunn and indeed of of Curran and that followed obviously ahead of a a management meeting but uh, the situation rumbles and rumbles on. Cashel King Cormacks uh, released a statement in the past 24 hours as well to reiterate their disgust at the manner in which Bonner's departure was handled. Therefore it was a great disgust they wrote to learn on social media that a press release from the Tipperary County Board headlined by the line Colin Bonner relieved of his duties we find the statement totally unacceptable towards a man that had firstly given everything as a player in the blue and gold and secondly was clearly enthusiastic about entering into the second of his three year term mandated by the County Board Colin had a clear vision towards developing the current player base into the future and presented this to a 15 person management committee we had Shane McGrath on the show last night essentially to review the All-Ireland Hurling final but also as the news had broke we got his view on the appointment of Liam Cahill in place of Colin Bonner I, I, I wouldn't feel bad about how quickly it was done I think it's the right thing I think there was a quick turnover down in Cork as well like um, with Pat Ryan coming in you know it, like what do you want Richie like I mean uh, Liam Cahill is is the man for the job right now like and I'm I'm personally delighted that he's that he's in as quick as he is, you know. Um, as regards the way the thing, the Colin Bonner thing was had, handled, yeah, maybe it could be done a bit better. But I suppose the other side of it is like, I mean, someone will go in and they'll do their best. But and as Colin Bonner did as a player, what he did down at WIT, he was at Wexford, Carlo. I'm sure he went in and did his best. I'm sure that no doubt about that. But look, it's maybe your best just isn't good enough for for a particular job or a particular group, and it just it didn't seem to be this time and. When Tommy stepped away and Paul Curran stepped away, I think it was an inevitable that you know there was going to have to be a new there was going to be a new manager as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know the way it was handled, look, I suppose no more so than the players, as I said, you know, being on uh, being on nights out and these things that they make mistakes. When you put yourself up to be an intercounty manager and first is a ruthless, ruthless job at the moment, more ruthless than it ever was being with social media and everything. You hear everything back now. So look. Colin Bonner will be he'll be disappointed. You know, he, he made that very clear that he is disappointed the way the thing has been handled. But look, for, for Tip Harlan, I think it's a great appointment. Yeah, Ryan O'Dwyer is a former Tipperary and Dublin hurler and of course a member of Cashel King Cormac's club. He joins us on the line to discuss this particular issue. Uh, Ryan, thanks so much for coming back to the show and uh, taking time out to speak to us this evening. No problem at all. No problem. Look, I suppose over the the, the reason you were giving me a call, I said I had to jump on straight away because I, I thought the way I won't be as as, as enthusiastic as, as Shane was there. Look, I, I'm delighted Liam is getting the job. Uh, I think he will do a good job. I, I think he should have got it there in, in 2018, to be honest. But the way everything was done with Colm um, and the cards that Colm were de- was dealt as well uh, with the amount of players that retired last year, the amount of injuries... Um, that he had, like I, th- I think it was 13 players that uh, didn't take part last year, whether it was through retirement or, or injuries. Uh, he was down 13 players straight away before there was a ball popped. So he was already at a disadvantage, and then to be treated like this after the service he was given, uh, that he had given to, I, I just, I'm, I'm very disappointed. And I, I thought better of the Tip County Board. Um, until I saw that, like even the, the wording of the statement that we're relieving them of the Jews, like they're doing Colm the favour. Um, I just thought it was very bad taste. He was obviously given a, a three-year term a year ago, uh, Colin Bonner, that was, of course. Um, this year, let's be honest, didn't exactly go to plan. Nobody can help the amount of retirements uh, that there were, and there were uh, you know, several, uh, Porrig Mar being among them. There were obviously the injuries as well to John McGrath. There was the injuries as well to Bubbles O'Dwyer that ruled him out of large chunks of the season and as you mentioned his player panel was severely depleted and in a state of flux as often happens with counties when you have uh, that many people uh, retiring en masse Um, was it fair that he was only given a year um, first of all and secondly like should there not have been a bit more expectation among uh, county board people and among among that management committee that this might take a little bit more time 
than perhaps a year or two or three? Yeah, look, even when he got the job, even before he got the job, uh, when there was speculation of who would get it, all the talk was, look, it's going to be a rebuild. So, oh, look, the, nobody really wants it because they're not going to get into the success straight away. Um, and look, they, they were right, and then you throw the injuries and retirements on top of that. Um, because it is a rebuild, you look at the, the average age in the team, it's it, it's a lot older than a lot of other intercount teams, um, which was before the retirement. Um, so there, there was going to be a rebuild straight away. But now, in one way, you're, you're nearly setting it back a little bit because the players there, the present panel at the moment, they are just getting used to Colm and his way of doing everything. And now there's another new manager in. So that's, that's three managers in three years. Um, for the lads that are just after joining the panel, so there's not there's not the same consistency and, and continuity there uh, from those players, and especially there's, there's a, a key stage there when you're just starting out your inter county senior career. And you could be 20, 21, 22, and it's vital times. And if it's not handled properly, you can lose that year, those couple of years. You can lose your development. Um, so I think for them, it's different if they're 27, 28, 29, whatever. But when you're the 21, 22, so vital that there's consistency there with the, the management team. Um, but look, regardless of who's there, uh, whether it's Liam or whether it's Colin, just the, I, I think the, the the way it was dealt, and I, I agree 100% with the statement that Cassius and Comics put out. Um, I was actually so proud that they did they, take that stand and associate with the club. Um, but just the way it was dealt with by the county board, it would seriously make you question the people at the top, the decision makers in the, the Tip County Board. What is their agenda? You know, like the, just the way it was dealt with. I suppose the question is what I'm wondering when you consider uh, a year ago. Liam Cahill wasn't in a position really to, to take on the job. I think he'd said that he was um, going to stick out his, his tenure with Waterford and that's absolutely fair enough. Do you think that Colin Bonner was a stopgap appointment in any way, shape or form a year ago? Um, yeah, well, the, the, not, not a massive amount of people wanted the job last year. Like you, you look at the, the odds of who was going to be the next manager. Colin wasn't even quoted. Um, so, but he... he, he because he, I know he's living in Waterford, but because he's a true tip man, because he gave his blood, sweat and tears for the jersey, he, he did whatever was required. Um, so he, he stepped into the, the role as manager. He did what, what he thought was the right thing to do. Um, I suppose putting his management team together, it was kind of rushed. I suppose putting his management team together because he was announced manager and then had to put a team together straight away. Um, and as far I could be wrong saying this, but as far as I'm aware, he didn't have anything organised beforehand with him. Um, like a lot of managers would, if they're going for a job, they'd have their backroom team sorted already. That would be part of their package. So it, it did take him, he, he was caught off guard, and it did take him time to get settled. Um, like I said, it took the players time to get used to him as well and to get used to the, the setup. Um, yeah, but just I, I look, I yeah, I do. I suppose I do think it was a stopgap measure. And um, to say that Liam wasn't interested in the, the tip job this time last year, and fair enough, I can understand that he had a, a good thing going with Watford. But then all of a sudden, um, this year he's very interested. And um, even though Tip had a bad year, and um, Colm was just said oh, we we're, we were leave him of his duties on whatever day it was. Wednesday or whatever and then the following day um, Liam was announced as manager or, whatever, or maybe two days later Liam was announced as manager so it's kind of how much communication was there before the county board got rid of Colin Yeah like the county board obviously will point out that they're not here to kind of answer those questions at the moment we'll put them to them I'm sure uh, to try and get some kind of uh, timeline on all of this like yeah, don't as you're looking at it from the outside. Now, like I said, like you said, they, they're not here to defend themselves, but um, Colm goes one day, the following, and not that he left, like they got rid of him, and then the following day or two days later, Liam is put in charge. And look, I do, don't get me wrong, I really do wish Liam the best look. I, I really like Liam. I think he's a very he's a brilliant manager. He's a brilliant player, uh, and he's just a, a good guy as well. So I'd love to see him do well. 
you'd love to see Tip get back to where Tip should be. Um, but just it just it just grates on me the way it was all dealt with. Well, to Shane McGrath's point last night, like he we we asked him about the the swiftness that this was all done with, in the sense that. We knew Colin was relieved of his duties. Um, we heard the day after he was relieved of his duties, so if I have the timeline right, that Liam Callan announced that he wasn't going to be seeking a fourth year in charge of Waterford. And then last night we get the appointment of Liam Callan as hurling manager. Shane said, like, this is actually the way to do it. You need to act. If you know the person is oh, out there, I, you know the right person I, is out there, you need to go for them. And with their temporary uh, county championship starting pretty soon, you need to have somebody in place so that they can judge and put together a management team and put together start putting together in their head a panel for next season like yeah, he I, says the time I, it is, like needed to be done now or never yeah no I, I agree 100% with you like it should be it should be done as soon as possible you saw in in Cork Kieran Kingston stepped down himself I don't know did the county board not want him or whatever but they gave him the chance to, to step down himself and give him a little bit of respect that way and then the following day Pat Ryan has put in place so yeah I do agree with the the swiftness of it and the the, the 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 to get someone in, especially when the club championship is just starting to kick off, get someone in, get them to see as many games as they can and get their all their set up and play. But there's a way of doing it and it's not relieving someone of their duties and then putting someone in place the following day or two days later or three days later or whatever. Um, I just think it was it showed a, a massive amount of a lack of respect for Colm and what he has done for Tipperary Hurling. And I know you're going to have people say that, oh yeah, well, he, he was a player 30 years ago and all that, but he still, he won two All-Irelands with, with Tip. He won a, a club monster with Cashel. Um, he, he he won an All-Star in 88. He, he, I think, I think he, won, he, he actually, he was injured one year, so I think he actually won minor, under 21, junior and senior All-Ireland with Tip. I think he was the only one to ever do that. Um, so what he has done, what he has given to the jersey, and then to treat him like that, it's just, it's great on me. In terms of his performance for the past, you know, year or less than a year, obviously enough, in terms of Inter-County, like, Tip finished bottom of the Munster Championship table, um, I think by dint of, of uh, Kerry not winning the John McDonough, they avoided a playoff. So was that squad, was that panel that, Colin Bonner had at his disposal, disposal this year better than the place where they finished in the championship this season? Um, I suppose the question you have to ask and I will I will answer your question in a second but the question you have to ask is right, Colin was in charge this year we've already been highlighted uh, the injuries that were there the retirements that were there but you have to ask the questions right, if Liam was over the, the team this year would he have done as well? If uh, Liam Sheedy was over the team this year would he have done as well with the players at his disposal I don't know um, I don't like with the, the, and no disrespect to the players there but just the, the leaders and the hurlers that were missing um, there, was, there wasn't that same drive there from the, the leaders because they weren't there it was just all new players coming in and Colin did find a lot of new players this year um, so, like, look, there is there is a progression there, and there is the good points there that he did find, lad. Um, just uh, would another manager have done as well with the players we had at their disposal? I, I, I don't know, and I, I, I honestly don't think so. I think he got it as good as he could out of the group that were there this year. Would the best scenario from a tip perspective, uh, a tip county board perspective, a tip uh, management committee perspective, however you want to frame this, would the best idea from them a year ago? to have appointed Colm, given the, the way that, the, as we mentioned, the panel was in flux and there's a number of retirements and there's a number of players who were injured, etc., etc., with long-term injuries, would it have been better to appoint him on a one-year term and roll from there on a year-by-year -year basis, or did they need to show faith by giving him a three-year term, which has thus created this mess, I guess, from your perspective? Yeah, look, if they thought it was only going to be one year, give him one year, and extend to him the look, it's going to be a rolling basis. You could be here in ten years' time. We just we 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 were only prepared to give you one year, um, and that that would have all this half. That would have avoided everything that had gone on. Um, and I'm sure Colin, when he was going into the position, would, would have been like, "Yeah, well, look, Liam is probably going to get this position when I'm finished, but I, and I want to leave it in a better place than than I I I got it." Um, but he wants. I'm sure he wanted to leave his mark on it. 
did he get to put his mark on it after one year? No. Um, no, he did find a few players and everything like that, but he didn't get to leave his mark on it where they play in a certain type of hurling or that they're known for a certain certain uh, aspect of their game. You would know, I'd imagine, a fair number of the panel. Like, Was there any talk internally of unhappiness at Colin Bonner's uh, position or, or his management style or his tenure, as short as it was? Well, look, I, I'll be really honest with you. Shane McGrath will be uh, probably better to speak out than, than me because he's living in tape. He, I'm sure he sees all those lads a lot more. Um, I'm living in Dublin. Um, I'd be in touch with one or two, but that would be it. At the, and even at that, it's only if I go down to Cashel, I might bump into them. Mm. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, the fact that Tommy and Paul Corn left there last week. Now, I don't know the specific reasons why they left or anything like that, but then I suppose Chinese whispers, you hear stories coming through of all the players had a meeting and they, they didn't want the, the smell of the way it was. Then I heard off of a player, actually, that there was no team meeting. So it's like social media and everything. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing, and it's just the story. Chinese whispers just go with the story, and it just grows legs. Um, would I say that the, the, the panel or the, the team or a group of players didn't, uh, didn't like the setup? I think no matter how successful the team is, you're going to have, like, the, if you're 15 starters, about 10 of them are pleased. You're going to have the, the, the remaining five plus the five or six lads that might come on, they're happy enough. And then the, the remains of the team nearly always hate the manager, you know? So. I think it would be unfair for me to comment if the if there was strife in the dressing room or anything like that because I don't know enough about it. Yeah, as regards the timing of uh, Cashel King Cormac's statement today, should that not have come in the immediate aftermath of Colm's departure rather than the appointment of Liam Cahill? Um, yeah, probably should have come uh, there. Now, it was last night, it was yesterday evening, yeah. it was uh, released. Um, yeah, it probably should have uh, come there too earlier. Um, I suppose that with the timing of it, it was over. Like the column was released just before All Ireland final weekend, and then um, you had the, the the All Ireland final, which was that was all the distraction. And then the the committee, the executive committee, had to have a meeting about it, what the word and what did they want to say, what they want to get across. Yeah, it, it definitely could have been done a day or two earlier, but I suppose because the All Ireland final weekend was right bang in the middle of it I can understand the delay with it Yeah but it now looks like they've followed on from Cal's appointment with this statement about disgust about how Colin Bonner has been treated so it undermined is probably a bit strong but it takes away I guess from, from Cal's appointment that there's still this air of disquiet among at least one club and perhaps maybe more within the county at the way Colin Bonner was treated um, Yeah well look there, there has to be I, I, I think there, 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 and I won't, I won't say clubs against it but there, there will certainly be individual people in Tipperary and a lot of people from who I've been talking to just and they're, they're not don't get me wrong here anyone I have spoken I've spoken to a lot over the last few days nobody is pissed off or, or annoyed that Liam Cattle has got the job no, nobody I've been speaking to anyway but they, so many people are just disappointed about the way it was done the manner in which Colin was gotten rid of and the the, the just the wording of the statement is a, is a was a massive thing. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I just the people in charge in the county board, um, I just think they probably have to have a chat with themselves and ask themselves questions. Look, what can we do better to get the best uh, for Tipperary rather than just um, going off on our own uh, agenda? Um, if the same happens this time next year, like if if there's a still an underperforming Tipperary team and um, would you expect Liam Cahill to come under the same scrutiny that Colm faced uh, this year? No, I, I, no, I, I certainly don't think so. I, I, I do think he's under pressure straight away because the way the county board dealt with it, um, there'll be, there'll be n- n- like a, the tip public will be ex- not expecting results but they'll be expecting a bounce back um, and there should be a bounce back with players coming back into it and then the players that have been Drip fed this year, there for the, uh, a year further along their development. Um, so he, he should get better performance next year, regardless of who is there. Um, but 
will will he get um cru- will Liam get crucified if they they don't qualify for a monster final or qualify for the the uh, third place team for the qualifiers? No, I I don't think they, there will be that that same. I suppose reaction from the county board anyway. There definitely won't be the same reaction because they don't want to shoot themselves in the foot two years in a row mm. by doing this because they'll find it very hard to get a manager then the following year. Um, but look, I, I suppose it's like every year, at the end of every single year, no matter how good or how bad you do, they'll have an end of year review, both the, the county committee but also the, the management team, and they'll say, right, what what can we do next year to do better? Um, do we need more um, emphasis on the, the under twenty team coming through, or do we need to, you know, do we need to pick the training up? What do we need to do? So that that will be assessed um, at every at every level and at every, every point of view as well. Does there need to be a bit of a more joined up thinking? Like I'm thinking of the way Pat Ryan obviously was appointed down in Cork, and that he come through managing the underage teams down there, and there seems to be this linear progression whereby you will move up essentially with your group of players that you've had. Um, I'd imagine there's probably succession plans in, pra- in place uh, in Limerick as well um, once the once the day eventually comes that they have to change manager too and yeah. John Coyley decides to step away would it be better if Tip had something like that in place to avoid these really messy situations that they find themselves in you can't help Liam Sheedy deciding to retire that's you know a separate issue I'd imagine but you'd want to have succession plans in, pl- in place you'd want to have pathways in place that players and management can kind of step up together really yeah I think there, there's pros and cons with that and I, I, I don't think everyone that comes up through the as a management team I don't think everyone that comes up through the, the ranks should progress to senior level but if there's one group that are doing uh, specifically well or developing players like the, the underage in Tipperary in every county it's about developing the players. It's not about the success or the winning. Yeah, it's nice to, to win your all earned the uh, Irish Press Cup and uh, the same with the, the Under-20 Championship. It's great to win them, but it's about how many players you want to get from that team to senior level that can compete. You saw uh, Kilkenny at the weekend there. The, I think there was five or six from the Kilkenny when, from that team at the weekend was five or six that got bet by Westmead under 20 when Eddie Brennan was over. So, like, yeah, you might think, oh, geez, they, they were used to got bet by Westmead in the, the Leinster quarter final. They're not going to progress on. But they did, and they really contributed the weekend there. So I think it's about developing the players. And I think every county board, well, most county boards, and it has to review the, the player development protocol, the steps involved, and how you're going to bring them through. Um, and yet, uh, like I suppose, getting back to your original question, yes, there is a certain amount of managers there, selectors there, coaches at those underage development squads, under our minor under twenty, that that will be naturally taking that that uh, step forward to senior level. Do you think there's uh, people are willing and able to move on from this now once that statement is out there, or do you think that you know the obviously the, the level of uh, feeling that you have towards the situation and the way in which Colin Bonner was handled and the way. Uh, the club uh, have dealt with this obviously with their statement in the past 24 hours like is this going to linger and is this going to rumble on or will it be forgotten as soon as kind of club championship kicks in and we no, come around to it again and, and, and once like the senior is there right this, this is after happening Colm should be pissed off and rightfully so the club should be pissed off rightfully so and, uh, and there will be a lot of people annoyed with the way it was dealt with but it's after happening now you park it you move on and you get behind the team now you give Liam the support that he needs um, and, and the rest of his management team, you give the players the support they need, um, and, and you get on with it. There's, you don't want to have regrets in life. You don't want to have, uh, oh, if I if only I'd done this, if only I'd do that. There's nothing you can do about the past. You think about the future, and you get on with that. So I think the, the tip public now, the tip public can be very critical um, and kind of hold hold a few grudges. But I think that they, they, yeah, they, they should be annoyed with this. But I think that everyone needs to move on and get behind the, the the temporary team for 2023 and forward. Okay. Rhino Dwyer, thanks so much for taking time out to speak to us this evening. No problem at all. Thank you very much.